Okay, guys. Um, I know you, I've been showing a lot of videos of uh, the new lab that I'm working on, but we're uh, we're still. This is down in my old lab. We're still uh, working here until we get the new lab finished. But here's uh, here's an example of uh, of a uh, um, a smaller Harris uh, Harris. A wonderful company, boy. I tell you what, Mike's a great guy. Um, now this particular burnout unit, uh, you, know, you got a heat exhaust here, and we've got fans that suck it out, uh, but it's just burning out wax. This is this type oven here is most commonly used for Crown and Bridge Laboratories and jewelry uh, jewelers uh, for making jewelry, which I do have. I can make jewelry as well, but uh, it's a whole lot easier than making teeth, uh, but uh, <laughs> and a lot prettier too. But anyway, just so just to show you, the muffle size in this is probably I don't know. I'm gonna say eight by eight, maybe. You know, you got your you, know, you just set your rings. I got these fire bricks in there, but if you see these coils. They come out, and there's your thermostat here, and right, right there, and then these coils come out, and uh, that's uh, that's what I believe my error message that I'm having in uh, my big unit is, is that the coils are burned out. Now, my big unit is here. I'm sorry it's so dark in here and noisy, but I've got lots of casting equipment, air conditioning unit, and who knows, the compressor might turn on sand blasters, uh, boil out tanks, pressing units, all kinds of crap back here. But anyway, this is my Harris 4003, which is a, an awesome burnout unit. Um, I use it hard, and it is tough, durable, great piece of equipment. And there it is. That's the Harris. And it is the... Uh, and you probably can't see this, the model 4003, a uh, pretty good size unit. Um, <coughs> now I've got it turned sideways, the hood sucks all that up there. And this has two vents on top there. But if you'll notice, inside here we're looking at, uh, oh, uh, 16, 18 inches by... 12, I mean, it's just big. You know, it's because we're putting rings uh, this size in there. Of course, I put it on the fire brick, but I mean, that's three and a half inches around. Uh, the smaller one for jewelers and crown and bridge, they're about this big around. So, anyway, that's my stack of frames that I have that I need to burn out, but. Uh, there again, my situation is uh, one of my heating elements, and there's two in here that burned out. So this is my whoop. Sorry, I'm got you on a tripod here. Hard to kind of get in that area. This is my thermocouple here, and then here, and here, and here, and here are where. The coils, other, otherwise known as the heating elements, uh, connect to the unit itself. And I'm sure one of them's broke somewhere. So luckily I just so happened to, and I've got them spread all out because they're, they're, they're pretty long. Uh, there's two of them there. These parts are probably 150 160 bucks plus shipping. Uh, and then you've got some new uh, brass connections here. Which, uh, if anybody's watching this video and they have this type of oven, it's very important to uh, put the new brass fittings on every time you change your heating elements. Every time you want to put your new brass fittings on the end. Don't just be lazy and use your old ones because they're convenient. Take an extra 10 minutes and put your new brass fittings on. You'll, you're uh, the, your li the lifespan of your heating elements will last longer. They won't burn out close to the connection. 
So, with that being said, uh, we've got to get into there and disconnect all of that. So we have to have all of our tools that are required. So the tools that are required for this are, well, I've got some different ratchet sizes and and I've got uh, the proper ratchet size there for most of the uh, bolts that I'll be taking out, pair of pliers, some heavy duty, uh, and I've got a bigger pair than this, but I think they're at the other shop because this is extremely strong uh, to cut. And it's very, very, very heavy duty. So you have to have a good set of pliers to cut that with. Your regular, uh, your regular pliers that you would use to do uh, cutting standard wire, or small wires, or wrought wire clasp, things like that, is not acceptable. It will ruin your regular set of uh, pliers, uh, wire cutters, if you try to use those. And uh, uh, just to spare channel locks, a uh, screwdriver I probably won't need. Okay, so I've got uh, the unit turned around to the back side of it, and basically I'm just going to Just unscrew, uh, unscrew all of these, and open up the back side of the unit. And I've got them all the way across the top, sides, bottom. So it kind of goes like this forever. So I won't bore you with that. Um, I'll just continue unscrewing the back panel, and then I'll show you inside once I get through. Okay. Um, the first thing uh, I forgot here, the safety always comes first, so you always want to make sure that your electrical source, your electrical plug is unplugged. There's a lot of voltage going in here, and trust me, you don't want to get zapped by this. And while you've got the unit out and you're jacking around with it, it's a good time to do some dusting and cleaning where maybe there may be some soot build up through here you know and then I'll probably go back over it with the air compressor a little bit but the main thing is just make sure that your power source is unplugged okay now that we have the back cover unscrewed and it's removable if you'll notice we have a lot of uh, wire connections here which is preventing us from taking this entire back plate off. I could disconnect these. Uh, I could connect, disconnect all this and that's probably bad lighting. This there, but you know, it's it's easy enough to just kind of let this lay up against my chest and uh, do the work that I need to do from here. Um, now, this is the area that we're working on here. God, this light is horrible. Um, we've got well, I'm trying to work with the light in my hand at the same time. These are the brass connections that I was talking about that I said don't don't scrimp on those. Make sure that you put the new ones on there. And there's four of them. Okay. Now, what you have to keep in mind is you have two sets of coils and you have this jumper cable going from one set of coils to the other set of coils. This jumper right here. So, you want to make sure that your jumper cable is connected the same way that it was before. Uh, replacing a new jumper cable is not not really necessary. So we have uh, your power supply coming in here and here. We have jumper cables. I have one jumper cable here to connect the two heating elements together. So now I'm just going to disconnect each one of these save this, lay it down here on the left side, so I know this goes on the left side, and then I'm going to take the black, the dark colored wire and put it in one spot, and the light colored wire and put it in another spot, and remember where they go. I got my dark wires on top, my lighter colored wire is on the bottom. So, well actually, 
they're the same color <laughs> but <laughs> anyway so here we go uh, I won't bore you with uh, I can't do the camera and all this so I'll just show you as I go I'll show you then I'm going to disconnect all of these here okay the top wire that was here I just laid over here and just put it in this little hole right here so I know it's on top and then this bottom wire here I'm just going to take it and I'm going to just kind of throw it off to the side of the machine there that way I know that one's on on the bottom so now I just have to uh, sorry about the bad camera work here guys uh, it's kind of difficult to hold all this and do the same time but now I'm going to disconnect these put this wire off to this left side so that I know it's on the right side uh, and then we'll get started on the coiling okay now I have all of the wires disconnected except for this here which goes to the thermocouple they're all disconnected I've got off to the side here I've got this piece here with two brass connections that connects the two heating elements together which you think oh my god those look fine there's nothing wrong with that don't be lazy, replace them, it'll be worth it. Trust me, from experience I know. Then I have my top wire and my bottom wire over here. So now at this point, uh, what you have is you've got these ceramic inlets. So you want to be very careful to take these ceramic inlets without breaking them put them somewhere in a nice safe spot which they'll be moved from there because they'll be working in that area so you take your ceramic inserts out and now these are the coils that I'm going to replace so we're going to have to turn the machine around and pull the coils out through the front uh, the front of the machine in the back so I'll try to set the camera up so you can see how that's going, how that works. Uh, we'll, we'll give her a shot. Okay, I had these two wires. I had one hanging low, and then I have one hanging in this hole right here. The one in the hole was for the top. So now I'm going to have to move the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect this brass piece here, and I'm going to remember that the one that I disconnected is is on top. The one that still has the brass piece will be on the bottom. So the first one that I reconnect will be the one on the top. So here we go, that brass piece is gone. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start in the very back of the machine. And I hope the zoom works okay, but you probably can't see back there. Let's see. I don't know if you can see. Well, I'll shine the light just off center a little bit. We've got inlet here and let here there and there so we're going to take all four of these out and then we're going to uncoil we're going to uncoil all these coils without breaking the brick now that is the tricky part as you can tell there's a couple of spots in there I've changed this I don't know four or five times out over the last few years that you know that just break off just from burning out or Maybe I was a little clumsy one time, but it's still functioning fine. It's not hurting anything. So, uh, I'm going to try to put, I'm, I got my short tripod here and it's kind of in the way, but I'm going to try to set it up to where you can see how I'm taking the coils out. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Uh, I put the tripod inside my casting well. Uh, I hope you can see what I'm doing. So, here we go. First things first is I have to uh, gently, gently lift this up and pull this out where it is connected into the back. Okay, so now I successfully have this pulled out. Now we're going to do this four times. Okay. And hopefully we can do it without breaking anything. That's the goal here. If we do, it's not the end of the world. 
but it's just kind of a bummer. And now you don't want to have to buy a new brake. There's number two. Okay, not much problem there. This one looks like it's going to be a little more difficult. that it's not uh, that it's not something uh, to do with the motherboard or some of the other things that could be wrong. So we're just going to kind of continue along here. And whoop, there's another piece of brick. Put this one on this side. 
That's just from wear, maybe a little clumsiness. I'm trying to do this pretty carefully, but this brick is pretty soft. Okay. So this one here, we're going to put in the trash. That's where this one belongs. So now, the idea is, you, if you see the spacing on this on this coil, you want to kind of keep as, as not too long of a span, but not too short of a span. Now, it's not going to fit in there perfectly. So you're going to have places where maybe it might be a little tighter or a little looser. But you want to try to keep these spaces as uniform as possible. So that's what we're going to try to do. Here we go. Now we're going to do the bottom coil first. I'm going to put it right in. Whoop, where's my flashlight so maybe you guys can see here. Okay. Um, we're going to put the bottom coil in first. We're not worried about these ceramic crucibles just yet because we'll put those in here just a little bit. Now the trick is getting around these corners successfully and these round edges without breaking your fire brick. Now they do have a little bit of a gap so you can pull them forward or push them back as needed to adjust for the length of your uh, of your coil. So you want to make sure that they're pushed back in there in these corners and that's where the old trusty old flathead will come in. But that's where they whoop there goes my light. That's where they tend to kink up a little bit more. It's in these corners. Make sure they're down and that they're not going to lift up. If they do lift up a little, it's not the end of the world. It's really not. I'm going to shove this in there and kind of tuck this down a little bit through here. Just make sure it's in a good position. You know, just kind of look as you're going. Okay, so, now, I don't know if you can see from here, but I'm going around this corner, and I'm about, oh, I'm a couple of inches. My hole is here, and my lead wire is there. So, what I have to do is backtrack. Like, see, I've got a loose area here. I can adjust here. I can adjust here and here to uh, loosen this up a little bit. Here we go. As you can see, but after the adjustment, it easily goes with no tension or pressure right into the hole. So, now, you know, uh, I'm not going to bore you with showing you me doing the same thing, same exact thing twice. Because it's the same thing. You've got your uh, rounded areas here. And uh, I'm trying to make this light where you can actually see where the coil is. But these slips aren't all that great for high, for real detail stuff. But you, know, you just want to make sure that your coils are in a good position. And they're fitting in there properly in the back. Um, Okay, sorry, I'll zoom in to the back so that you can see what I'm talking about. You want a nice, comfortable fit from this connection here that's going out, which I'll put that ceramic, uh, that ceramic connection back through there, that ceramic cylinder, and this one. You want them nice and comfortable. You don't want them pinched, pressured anything you want them to lay in there pretty smooth okay again so we uh, we now have a uh, nice comfortable fit with our uh, 
puts our connections in the back here, which I'll point out in red, which will be one, two, three, four, and you don't see a lot of, uh, well, there's not a lot of pressure here, and they fit in there comfortably. So now, we will go to the back of the machine, and we will uh, we'll get her going again. Okay, now you'll notice, uh, I don't know how to flashlight, huh? but uh, we've got one, two, three, four. Now, we're going to put these ceramic uh, crucibles in here for our inlets. We're going to put those in first. And uh, you just want to make sure that you're, you know, don't pull it like super tight, you know, and don't have it super loose. Just have just a little bit. And you can feel it pulling against that back wall of the machine. So you just want to push it up about a, I don't know, a quarter of an inch maybe. Just to keep it from touching the wall. So uh, we're going to do this on all four of them. Put these inserts back in there. We're gonna pull it till we feel it. And we're gonna push it out on oh, maybe maybe a quarter inch at the most. Just enough to keep it off the back wall. And uh, here we go with number three. Just going in there, I can feel it tight. Push it forward a hair. Number four. Pull it tight. Push it forward a hair. And now it's time to work on all of our new brass fittings. Okay, so if you remember correctly, we put we took the brass fitting off the top heating element and the bottom heating element we just left hanging low. So now we have our brass fittings, which basically, and again this camera doesn't have macro, you're going to connect you're going to, have to totally unscrew and connect this portion to this end of the brass fitting. And then you're going to put your heating element through this hole. And then on this end of the hole, you will put this screw in this direction to tighten it up. So hopefully you can catch this on video. Um, probably not because I've got this back piece that I have to hold that's still connected down here with a bunch of wires that I don't want to disconnect. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. We're going to take our brass fittings like we talked about. This piece, this piece, and hopefully you can see in here. I don't know. Maybe I can try to rig a light up. Um, I guess some lights better than no light. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our top hot wire and first thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this. Whoop, sorry, wrong end. This end is the end that crimps into the wire coming out of the box. So we're going to put the short screw, the short brass screw. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to tighten this up. Dealing with electrical, <coughs> connections are everything. So, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I have a good connection. And uh, I'm just going to use my little ratchet here and tighten that up real good. Now, the key is you have to position this in a way when you're tightening it so that you can get a good connection on this wire. 
and still be able to tighten it. So, I'm going to reposition this just a hair. I'm going to back it off. Push it forward, bend it this direction a little bit. Then when you tighten it, it's always going to pull it the other direction just a little bit. Okay. So nice and snug. Okay, so here we go. We've got I'm pulling it back, pushing forward about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to press my wire. There. And now I'm going to, luckily I, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. We're going to test it up here first, okay, we're getting close. Back it off. I can feel it against the back of the unit, pushing forward about a quarter of an inch. Let's just hand tighten this so that we know we're in a good position. And then we're going to tighten it up. Now, when you're tightening on this wire, it's pretty important that you get a really good connection here. I mean, you don't want to pull so tight that you're going to strip the wire. I mean, strip the bolt. But you do want to have Good solid connection. So there you go. Now, if you notice, this is sticking out further than the back of the machine is. So we'll get in. We'll get into that step uh, here in just a minute. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to replace the two brackets and put uh, this on here. So I won't bore you with showing you the same thing I did here over here and here and here again. Okay, so uh, I will show you reattaching here your uh, connection wires to complete your circuit. Be right back. Okay, now we have uh, this new brass fitting. It's all connected to the hot wire coming in to the coil, hot wire coming in to the coil on both sides. Now uh, what we have to do it's the same situation that we did with these brackets, but we're just going to replace them on this piece of wire that goes to these two. So we're going to put new brass brackets, even though these look beautiful. We'll save them for in case we're in a pinch, but we're going to put the new brass brackets on there and connect them. Okay, we now have all of our new brass fittings. Uh, we have everything connected but now these wires right here they stick out too far you know they're gonna touch the panel and then well that could be a dis Ooh, that could be a disaster so we're gonna have to cut these off about oh I'm gonna say about three quarters of an inch away from where the brass fitting is so that's where the heavy duty pliers the heavy duty wire cutters uh, come in handy so that'll be next Okay, so I have some uh, some flat nose, you know, fairly decent size. This is heavy duty stuff here. So I don't know if you can see or not. Uh, I'm not sure if I can really even rig up a good light here, but I'm just going to cut these off. I got about maybe a half inch, three quarters inch. Try to use some flimsy wire cutters. It's just not going to work very well for you. It's hard enough to get these cut off with these big bad wood wires. Just 
want to make sure that the back of your wires are not touching here at all. If you want to be safe, you could bend them in. I don't. I just make sure that they're not touching. So now, our job is complete back here. We've successfully attached uh, new brass fittings to all of our hot wires coming in for two separate coils. We've got a coil on top, coil on bottom. That's a hot for the top, a hot for the bottom. This connects the two together so they work that so that they work in conjunction together. So now I'm just going to go through the boring process of just putting this back panel on and screwing it on and then we'll see if the damn thing works. Okay now we have successfully um, reattached the back of the of the burnout unit. We're going to turn it around. We're going to turn it on and see if the damn thing works. Okay so I figured out I need a four and a half hour delay because it takes four and a half hours for it to Okay, 431, that's close. Auto off, user, whoop, no, I want to go to user number four. Three segments. Rate 10 degrees per minute for the first cycle. Go to 500. And we're going to hold 500 for one hour. Rate 20 degrees per minute to increase to 1850 to hold for 40 minutes and then I'm going to put 20 degrees per minute to get up to 1865 and then hold for three hours which I don't need that that's just additional time for casting or whatever it says ready and then I should hit on and it will go delay now that's what I would normally do to start a delay in the morning, but right now I need to see if the heating element is working. So I'm going to discontinue this. I'm going to go to probably setting number three because it starts immediately. And we're just going to check this and see if the heating element it was the problem and that it's working correctly. So, it's on, it's at 77 degrees, and I won't make you sit here and wait, I'll show you in a minute and let you know if it's working. Well guys, that's how you uh, replace a heating element in a uh, Harris HD4003 model. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, the first time you do it, you know, you're probably a little uncomfortable, but you know, after you do it several times like I have, no big deal. So, any of you guys in the uh, dental business or jewelry business, uh, there you go.